To die is to find eternal sanctuary. Safety from the horrors of this land. But to study death, to know its secrets, is to venture down a path that few dare tread. Atop her blackened tower, the graveyard rows. Elspeth von Drachen fights to protect the fallen, driving back the forces of evil. A perennial guardian of the Empire. Beneath death's shadow, our enemies fall. Ooh, and a very nice atmospheric introduction for our goth lady of Shyish. Welcome back, folks. Ruinous Insight here. We're coming straight from Tamarkan to another new campaign. Total War, Warhammer 3, Elspeth, Vaughn, and Draken. I am excited. I've always loved playing as the Empire. I don't know if it's nostalgia uh, for the first game, the glorious thunder of guns and artillery, or just the spectacle of mere mortal men standing against the horrors of the world, which represents Warhammer so well. Uh, but it's always been very fun to play. Before we do, though, let's take a quick look at what we've got for this faction. So we start with Nuln Ironsides, which does make sense. Uh, they're a big part of the iron companies of Nuln, but it does make me think. I wonder if there's a uh, if there's an iron company mechanic to this. I guess we'll see, but if there isn't, we'll make our own iron company with blackjack and etc. Anyway, Elspeth has access to the Imperial Gunnery School, which gives her unique units and upgrades, but we'll take a look deeper into it uh, shortly in-game. Her faction is obviously generally gunnery focused, giving her a massive 15 percent a reduction to gunnery units and double xp gain for artillery and the same uh, this does make sense she calls upon the engineers and foundries of Nuln, though elspeth herself isn't the leader of Vissenland, uh, which would be its countess emmanuel uh, she probably wouldn't be as interesting of a lord compared to elspeth though so you know fair enough anyway elspeth is a master practitioner of shyish and the wind of death and thus has cooldown reductions available to her immunity to vampiric attrition for her army uh, research rate increase conferring her status as a well magical researcher and the dark walker physical resistance emergency trait as always, we're going to go with very hard, very hard for the setup with the uh, AI stats essentially dialed up to max and that's about it. All glory to the algorithm and let's get to it. The enemies of Wissenland shall embrace their mortality. Alrighty, here we are. Isn't it glorious to be back at the helm of the Empire? I am going to very, very much enjoy building gunnery heavy armies and the Imperial Gunnery School mechanic uh, that Elspeth has access to will allow us to do so with gusto. So we have a unique schematic currency for this faction, which we can spend in the Imperial Gunnery School to unlock various upgrades uh, for various units. When the gunnery school itself gets upgraded via completing various objectives to level 2, it will allow us to unlock the amethyst armory and the uh, sort of amethyst variations of uh, various units and uh, more places to spend our, uh, our currency on. Uh, it'll be a real nice and we'll get a little bit more into it as we actually unlock stuff and play around with it. Uh, the other sort of unique 
unique mechanic to Elspeth is the Gardens of Moor. Unfortunately, by the looks of it, we are unable to access it until turn 5, but effectively it allows us to build uh, black towers within Imperial settlements, which A, allow Elspeth to teleport between them uh, with her army, and on top of that, give us access to special buildings within those locations uh, that provide various faction-wide buffs and local buffs as well, depending on the type of building that we build. Now, there's probably a lot more stuff to talk about, the campaign rework and all of that jazz, but we do have to start getting into combat and get our first cinematic battle underway. Fortunately, it is the vampire counts and that stand against us here, and as I'm sure many of you know by now, the vampire counts are my favorite faction, and uh, well, uh, I love playing against them almost as much as I love playing as them, and uh, it's lovely but on top of that, as wielders of the Purple Wind Shyish, the Amethyst Order are kind of the other side of the coin to the Vampire Counts. They despise necromancy, but on the other hand, uh, they do uh, uh, they do have a bad tendency to occasionally go rogue and become necromancers, so go figure. Uh, <laughs> hopefully it doesn't happen to us, or hopefully it does. Uh, but anyway, let's give this a read and let's jump into our first battle and with Lady Elspeth, shall we? Uh, Visenland prides itself in sparing no expense to thwart the Empire's ever encroaching foes. Ah, uh, huh. This is probably a reference to Countess Emmanuel uh, essentially emptying the coffers of Nuln to uh, hire uh, tons and tons of soldiers in order to repel Tamar Khan's invasion. And let's face it, this campaign is all about the Throne of Chaos, so uh, that does make sense. Anyway, the Elector Countess decrees full access to the Imperial Gunnery School's advancements granted to you. We gotta purchase a unit upgrade in the Gunnery School, and then we gotta get those schematics up and running to do so. We gained them in battle battles for damage or inflicted by artillery and gunnery units, unfortunately, we'll have plenty of those. And as soon as we complete this first thing, we'll be getting a prototype field coat. Well, that's some buffs. It looks decent. Fire resistance, missile resistance, ammunition, though I'm sure there will be many better items to come. All right, defeat the army, the court of the night. We also start with, ooh, an imperial engineer who is apparently strong. Uh, probably a good thing. It's not going to do anything for his range, but in case he gets into melee, uh, that'll be uh, that'll be helpful. Got to get that mechanical steed up and running. Can't wait to see these things. And we obviously will probably have to have two of these in our ranged armies. As like various engineers, like Dwarven or Skaven engineers, these guys will upgrade our uh, our gunnery units with their passives, which once again we'll see as we get into it and start upgrading them. Anyway, anyway, let's get to our first cinematic battle underway. Oh, I love the Empire. All right, uh, easy little fight by the looks of it that we're guaranteed to win. But we got to take a look at our Nuln Ironsides and at Elspeth herself and the engineer. So let's get to it. Magics I bring from the shores of death. You should fear me, my friends, but not half as much as the enemy will. Well, fortunately for the enemy, most of them don't really know fear being the risen and dead. Speaking of rising, the rose rises, and if she should fall in battle against the vampires or turn uh, to a vampire herself, certainly a mechanic uh, that we could do with uh, for the vampire ca vampire counts, she would be the risen rose, and thus the risen rose would rise. And yes, all of that just so I could say all that. Anyway, here we go, our first battle with Elspeth as well as our Nuln Ironsides and our uh, and our Imperial Engineer looking pretty good so far and we'll see how effective they are in combat. I'm also interested to see how the uh, Amethyst variant of the Nuln Ironsides differs. Otherwise, as usual, we've set up in those cla one of these classic little um, Imperial formations or at least the start of one uh, because we don't have enough troops to do a proper formation 
position. The enemy will be bombarded by our Hellstorm rocket batteries. We will focus down the skeleton spears rather than the zombies because the skeletons have a loose formation. Whereas the cannons will go after the enemy crypt horrors, a very solid unit, a respectable foe that is a mainstay of the Vampire Count's roster. And I always do tend to praise them and use them a lot when I play the Vampire Counts. So, yeah. Definitely gotta knock them out lest they do damage to us. They got poison, they got armor piercing, and they've got a very hefty HP pool, which when combined with the healing from Invocation of Nehek means a lot of additional extra effective HP. Anyway, keep working on them, cannon, and Hellstorm rocket batteries will not only damage the enemies, but there is also the area denial aspect of artillery, which uh, the AI, in trying to dodge artillery fire, has a tendency to uh, uh, back units away. But anyway, I digress. Let's see those non iron sides take their first volleys. With the rockets screaming overhead, the non iron sides and our uh, units of handgunners all together will target that unit of crypt horrors. Elspeth will drop a spirit leech on the horrors rather than on the enemy lord because we don't want these things uh, doing too much work. Elspeth will meet the enemy charge just to protect our units of swords a little bit, but fortunately, the enemy crypt horrors will drop and then the swords can immediately rush uh, towards the enemy uh, skeleton spears. Also, gotta love the Non uh, black and red sort of uh, uh, sort of color scheme, a little bit edgy, perhaps. I do like the very colorful color schemes of the Empire, generally speaking. Uh, but it's still a classic color scheme for us, and we're gonna look good while we uh, uh, while we match the Knights of Moor and uh, such, and put the dead back into their graves. Anyway, looks like the enemy Lord will move towards one of our rightmost flanking units of swordsmen, but Elspeth will meet him in battle. Let's watch him exchange a few blows, though Hellspeth has no need to fight fair, especially against the dead, and we'll have our Null Iron Sides and our Hand Gunners fire upon the enemy, while Elspeth pins him in place and uses Spirit Leech on him as well. Very nice, and look at that HP drop so, so quickly. An invocation of an heck not gonna help you, my friend, as you get ripped apart by gunfire, which we're gonna see a lot of throughout the campaign, I'm sure. With the fall of the enemy lord, that morale shock is in, and the enemy army will begin quickly to crumble away, getting a few more shots from our cannons and our, our hellstorm rockets, but they're hardly needed. All right. Easy little first fight, but it's a first fight, it's always going to be easy, and it'll get harder from here. Alrighty, very nice. The Graveyard Rose stands triumphant over her first uh, battle, and uh, let's hope that it is a herald of great things and to come. A relatively minimal losses are certainly within acceptable parameters at below 10%. And units destroyed and pretty much all focused to one single unit of spears, which held back the vast majority of the enemy time. Lovely. Uh, we get unit XP, we get a little bit of healing, or we can get a tiny tiny bit of money, and I do believe we'll have to fight again, so I think we'll take Praise Sigmar um, for the healing, and we should be in range of conquering Dodenbach. Yes, yes indeed we are. Uh, got ourselves a Hunter, Ambush Success Chance, maybe some use out of that, though hard to say. And uh, get a little bit of money for completing the Court of the Night first battle, and we now have enough schematics to immediately get an upgrade. The first tier of the Gunnery training grounds, so we still need to get to tier 2 to unlock the Amethyst Armory as fast as possible, uh, has the following conditions. We need to perform three gunnery school upgrades, uh, ensure that the following building has been constructed, which would be the Firearms Academy, 
and which will enable us to build handgunners and outriders, and we gotta get three units of handgunners on the field, which we, of course, obviously are. Uh, the rewards will be an ancillary experimental explosive, not sure what that is as yet, that's the tier two, and then recruitment costs for all gunnery units, a reduction, uh, which is always nice to have. Now, in terms of upgrades, it's an easy 10% to missile strength for gunnery infantry units, and it's including free company militia, but we'll be using tons and tons of the handgunners, so this is an easy pick, I think. I am, however, also tempted by the Hellstorm rocket upgrades as well. You always want to use Hellstorms and, to some degree, mortars uh, early game in the Empire. Mm, monstrous impact for the cannons. Hey, we'll start with the basic 10% upgrade, I think. And we'll do the Hellstorm rocket batteries after. And we'll wait for, well, a decent number of the other units to actually get them on the field. There's that prototype field coat, Mark 24. And I guess we can give it to Elspeth. What is this? Engineer, Master Engineer. We cannot give it to Elspeth. And, ooh, upkeep reduction for gunnery units in the army. Oh, well, that's nice. We can just outfit an engineer uh, real nicely. All right, well, I guess we'll do that then. You, sir, have the hunter, and you, sir, have the armor. Lupio Gosser, eh? Hmm. I have a sneaking suspicion you're going to be with us for a long, long time. Now, Root Marcher should get upgraded as soon as we take Daughter and Buck, so we don't need to upgrade it immediately. Let's go directly, I think, for Spirit Leech, as we want to get Soul Blight and Life Leeching. Soul Blight in particular, nice and spammable. Increase mobility, definitely the thing we want to start with with our Engineer, as it's very useful for any and every army. And away to Daughter and Buck we go. Send these spirits... Alrighty, and do we need to fight this? It depends. I mean, we just fought a similar battle, but they have no Lord and no Crypt Horror. I'm sure we'll get damaged by it, but I think we can freely auto-resolve this one. Yeah, that's not so bad. Uh, only 59 schematics. All right, it'll be a while before we get our next upgrade, but not to worry. As we get more gunnery units, it'll become easier and easier. Uh, Zealot, well, we'll need to combat all that vampiric corruption, no doubt, so it makes sense. And we start with an iron mining pit here. Hmm, we'll probably want to get the training field up and running as soon as possible to get spears up and running. And... Hmm, we would want another engineer, but we'd need to increase their capacity. Obviously, all Empire territories need to get Tailor's Guilds up and running, as that's where the economy comes from. And that clearly has not changed. For Verena and Nome. But for now, I think we'll just grab a couple of free company militia, because I love the unit. Uh, they're cheap and they're effective, and they can run enemies down while gunning them down in the back. I suppose we could do the same thing with pistoliers and use them effectively uh, like uh, doggos, but uh, perhaps it'll be faster to go straight for the uh, uh, straight for the outriders instead, because we have to get the uh, Firearms Academy building anyway. And anyway, we're going to start building it up. There we go. In two turns, we'll have access to both. Next up, we still have a little bit of cash remaining, and we'll want to build another building here. Tempted by the Battle Wizards, but perhaps not needed, and ooh, we're definitely going to need growth. We're really low at 35 only. Hmm. Alright, I think we'll start with the growth here. I do also want mortars, though. But if we upgrade this quickly, it shouldn't be an issue. And we have two artillery pieces for now, so start with the growth and the casualty or punishment rate, which we can certainly put to good use. Let's also get Root Marcher as we want to hit uh, Wissenberg as fast as possible. Now, the Empire regions, denoted by the uh, little symbol on each and every settlement, mean that we have to make sure that we hold the Empire and get our Imperial Authority up to the max, which will provide us bonuses to growth, control, and income from all regions within the Empire, and also includes mercenary repunishment rate for Electric Count State Troops, which are very, very fun to play around with. And, ooh, Durthu. Does Durthu kill Karak Norn on, like, the first turn? We'll see. We'll probably want an alliance with him. He does not want to do it for 5.4.6k, though, which is unfortunate. But okay. Now let's see about other diplomacy things. We got a trade agreement available to us here with Sterland, and we can certainly do that. And Reichland here. And we'll go for a non-aggression pact immediately as well. Alright. Teensy bit of extra little gold. 
All right, and techno. Oh, this looks different. Uh, alrighty. All right, it looks like the same vast majority of techs up here. I'm seeing a few different ones, however. Imperial Colleges, Manorialism, I remember. All right, well, we'll take a look at that, but for now, grain silos is what we want. Growth and casualty replenishment rate, and then probably supply wagons just for the campaign movement range. Imperial University will give us control as well, and ooh, construction cost reduction. Yeah, definitely going to focus on some economic, or economy, I should say, technologies first, and then Imperial Army stuff afterwards. Also, Nuln has landmarks. The Well, obviously, the Nuln gunnery school slash the uh, forges and foundry of Nuln unlocks recruitment of emperors wrath electric count state troops lovely gotta get those steam tanks up and running uh, upkeep production for all armies for artillery and guns yes please and then the black rose chapter house as well all right well I take it this will allow us to recruit knights of the black rose all right, but it does need a tier three, so we'll have to uh, wait a little bit to do that. Fine by me, let's end the turn and let's proceed to Wissenberg and continuing to attack the Court of Night here. Hmm. Yeah, so I guess the game will be pitting us against Sylvania as much as possible, and I do believe that the gar Okay, yeah, Durthu has destroyed Karak Norn. Uh, I do believe that... Uh Huh, we weren't allied with Karak Norn, were we? I wonder. Uh, I do believe that those Gardens of Moor... ...weaponry, honed and enchanted in the gunnery school, shall bolster our strength. Yes, indeed they will. Uh, ensure that the following building has been um, built a livery. All right, so that'll be the horses building. Uh... Where's the horses building? Nah, livery tier 3 horses building. Alright, fair enough. Reichsguard, Knights of the Black Rose, and Knights of the uh, Blazing Sun. Oh, interesting. This allows us Knights of the Black Rose as well, but so does the uh, Black Rose Stables. Hmm. Not 100% sure that we have room for that in Nuln itself, but I guess we'll see. For now, you're going to go and probably not upgrade the farm. And, ooh. I'm gonna have to give this a read. Wait, wait. There we go. Quest to shoot. Oh, Theodore Bruckner, the Countess's champion. We actually get Bruckner? Good. Uh, nobody tell Tamarkan the plan. Anyway, Nuln is known to many as the jewel of the Empire, not without good reason. As the Empire's industrial as well as cultural heartland, this sprawling city contains many manufactories providing heavy weapons, munitions, and ordnance, in addition to the Imperial Gunnery School, whose role is it to train the Emperor's artillerists in the way of modern, mechanized warfare. There are some, however, who believe that only a fraction of Nuln's potential is currently being exploited. The rulers of the Empire have demanded the development of a new cavalry doctrine, so Theodore Bruckner may join Imperial armies in the field. View this as an opportunity for Nuln to further earn its already well earned, deserved rather, title of Bastion of the South. All right, uh, Elspeth, you have no levels, but your minion engineer does. Let's get you survivalist, and though I suppose... We could probably just keep saving points after a little bit to get the uh, triangulation missile strength, standard for engineers. And basically all the stuff in here. And then there's black powder or extra powder here. Uh, potential for both. I'll think about it. Uh, I may very well start saving some points, but for now it's to Wissenberg we go. Now I don't believe we can... Summon any additional troops. Is this worth a fight, though? It'll be a little bit of a bigger fight, and while I think that perhaps the uh, previous uh, or the uh, Donnerbach fight was not worth fighting, this one has medium casualties. It does have a lord and it has more troops than the first fight. So we'll fight this one as well. Go. Yeah.
Alrighty, well, we've stood triumphant over the forces of the dead once, and hopefully we can do so again. The enemy has ramped up their unit numbers, but so have we by adding free company militia uh, to our numbers. Uh, they will be deployed directly behind our forces, as they can then um, fire into the gaps between our lines. Our Imperial formations are starting to take hold. We also have a nice hill uh, to fire down upon uh, from rather with our units of uh, guns as well as our cannons up here to hopefully not hurt our own units there is a bit of a tendency with let's say hellstorm rocket batteries to shoot your own units in the back especially when you start fighting uh, close so we'll have to watch out and be wary of that anyway it looks like our artillery is already starting to do decent damage to the enemy look at that nice volley taking almost half hp off the units of skeletons of course the enemy will counter that with an invocation of the heck on the unit uh, that got hurt but it will counter him with a nice spirit leech on the lord and of course the enemy Enemy Lord's loss is going to be a lot more devastating to the enemy uh, than a few skeletons. Looks like some fell bats are going to move on in, uh, ignoring our Free Company Militia and going directly for the Null and Iron Sides, but the Null and Iron Sides are closer to a uh, hybrid unit and will be able to defend themselves against the bats a lot better uh, batter than the regular handgunners would. And there we go. Down go the bats, but the rest of the enemy is uh, coming. Rockets continue to scream overhead, and it looks like some enemy units of uh, doggos decided to charge on through. Unfortunately, our swordsmen were unable to lock them in place, and they did get the charge in on the Free Company militia, but at the same time, they took a few volleys to the face. Uh, though their faces probably didn't feel it as they're undead, but uh, uh, took a few volleys to the face as they moved on in. And there we go. The lions are beginning to form and clash that we will need to adjust the teensy bit in order to allow our guns to fire upon the enemy but it's looking pretty okay Alrighty, and Elspeth has moved on in just to get her AoE attacks, especially on the relatively fragile enemy units like the Skeletons and the uh, and the Dire Doggos. Do have to, however, be careful of uh, her uh, getting damaged by the enemy Lord. Alright, watch that Pale Scythe work, and ooh, I think one of those rockets smashed into one of our troops there, definitely have to be careful. I do want to see some of Elspeth's animations here, so... And that's why we're going to be a little bit more focused on this portion of the battlefield for a little bit. Alright, very nice. Plenty of air on the units getting knocked back. The enemy lines are fully engaged with us at this point, which means our artillery aren't going to be all of that useful here. I do believe the enemy lord was just as before gunned down by, well, our guns as he moved on in, in combination with the cannons. I'm not even sure how close he made it to the, uh, to the battle lines, but it looks like his death, or true death, I should say, was not enough, and we still have to contend with all the skeletons and zombies he left behind. Free Company Militia holding ground and firing point blank into the enemy's skeletons, and as soon as those skeletons are cleared out, we can move them to flank the enemy and hit them in the sides and back. Iron sides are doing a great job by the looks of a drop in zombies and skeletons alike with gusto. And once again, I can't wait until we get more of these guys. Maybe a few Hawkland long rifles with them as well. Or, I mean, we're probably going to have multiple different types of gunnery army since we have uh, uh, so much available to us now. So I'll think about it. And how we form everybody up. And I guess we'll want lots of Amethyst units in uh, uh, in Elspeth's army in particular. Anyway, uh, the lines continue to hold. We have taken a little bit of damage on some of our melee troops. The Spearman unit down to below half HP and the Swordsman uh, here about following suit. Uh, but we got pretty darn good angles both with our handgunners and with our Free Company Militia. All of which are able to fire non-stop and grind the dead to dust such that they will rise no longer. There we go. You gotta love holding a hill as Imperials, don't you? 
I can't wait until we start fighting massive hordes of Skaven and Orcs. And, uh, well, the Vampire Cants, but like the proper Vampire Cants factions with more units to their name, multiple stacks at once. It's going to be glorious. Alright, Sigmar demands blood, and, well, Sigmar will have it. A lot of that blood will be ours, I guess, because, uh, well, the skeleton... You can't bring blood from a bone uh, in terms of the uh, skeleton warriors, but I guess the zombies are there as well. Anyway, with that, the second battle ends a teensy bit harder than the first, and hopefully uh, that continues in a chain of harder and harder battles to come. Good job. All right, a very, a very nice fight. Gotta love those Imperial formations standing against the hordes of the shambling dead. It's just so nice and atmospheric. Uh, the Hellstorm rocket battery did not actually do as much work as it might otherwise do against uh, this particular army, mostly because a lot of the enemy army was covered by trees on its approach, but that's just fine as it allowed our Imperial uh, state troops uh, to do plenty of work. 172 kills on the free company militia and 12k damage as well beating all the regular melee troops and just barely being edged out by the null iron sides and beating the hand gunners as well uh never underestimate free company militia especially in the early game folks i uh, spent my entire carol france campaign praising the unit and this isn't and this was also without the ability to uh, chase enemies down with them here so yeah uh, it's cheap and effective and lovely Sword of Swift Slaying for us will occupy the place, and this will give us the entire territory of Visenland. Uh, we're going to go into... Hmm. Let's see, we have Fyldorf. Ooh, hello. Oh, they've got decent stuff here. Uh, we should probably attack them immediately, though. I was thinking maybe we should go into the state troop levy. And we will probably want to build... Oh, then again, next turn we'll want to build hand gunners and such. Hmm. All right, what do we have here? We have a marble resource production. Which doesn't reduce construction costs, unfortunately. But nonetheless, uh, give us more trade with nearby factions. Uh, how close are we to a full stack? At 13 out of 20? Not all that close. All right, I think we will indeed go for the state troop levy first. We don't need to necessarily use Elspeth to recruit troops. And we can get, a, uh, for example, our first master engineer. Construction cost and construction time. Eh? We can certainly use that. Master Builder, eh? And then we can potentially use him as a follower lord and just use him to upgrade That's stuff. Right. Anyway, in the meantime, Elspeth has reached level 5. We definitely want that Soul Blight, as we will be using that quite a bit. And most definitely the Hold the Line passive as well. And what we've been doing is trying to hold the line. Engineer, hey you, sir. Uh, still haven't decided whether we go straight for extra powder or... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. If we save up right now, we can go straight through this entire line towards machinist preparations and power the unit up further. You know what, let's get one point in... Yeah, let's save points. We'll put one point in increased mobility and then the rest into this line as soon as we hit level 8. Makes sense to me. Uh, Elspeth, you're going to recruit some more troops and at the current time it's not going to be the... Uh, Handguns that are available, so let's go for some more free company militia. We could go for the pistoliers as well, but uh, I feel like they're much more likely to break and are more expensive and than the free company, so we'll hold off on those. All right. Uh, diplomacy check once again. How's everybody looking? Talibek land is looking okay. Durthu... He's still okay with us. Hopefully he doesn't randomly declare war on us. I definitely remember back in the day there was a tendency for Durthu to just randomly attack this and land, and that's us, so who knows. Uh, 200 schematics nearly, so we'll be able to get another upgrade shortly. And we definitely got to construct that livery, though perhaps we can build it at Fyldorth rather than a gnome. And honestly, while we have the money, let's go for the farm as well. More growth means faster upgrades. 
All right, I take it these guys are going to raise a new lord. We also have the wine market, I believe, here. Fildorf wine market. Income generated 300, and it's only a tier 2, which means we'll get it up and running quick and hopefully make Fildorf into a powerhouse. And between that and Nuln, which is an economic powerhouse as well, or at the very least, in the lore. Not so sure about the... Uh, uh, not so sure about the game, so much as a production territory. And, hmm, I suppose with the iron available here, we should probably build the uh, barracks in uh, Dornbach. But anyway, Imperial Gunnery School, Tier 1 Assessment. Ensure that the following building has been constructed Firearms Academy. The school watches its students closely. As the budding riflemen hone their skills, their suitability to use the gunnery school's latest advancements is assessed. Swell. Suavely. Swell and lovely is suavely. Uh, you are going to need the next tier in order to get more upgrades. Reload time reduction, 10% in ammunition, all right. Too bad we don't have that more powder ability that the uh, uh, that the Vampire Coast get. Mm, just to buff that sort of thing up. Anyway, Fildorf. Uh, did it get more troops? Looks like more. They've got, uh, they've got a lot more here, but nonetheless, I think we can besiege them. This is going to be a little bit more dangerous, perhaps, than I'd like, but what can you do? Uh, if we can go... Can we go into channeling stance? There's no guarantee that they'll sally out. But they were very well might. I imagine they'll try to attack us here. At least they should, but just in case we'll build siege equipment. But either way, we can knock down the walls if needed. Uh, Wissenberg, we're going to immediately get a Master Engineer, that Master Builder, right here. And we're going to have you start recruiting for Elspeth. Specifically, how many handgunners does she really need? She'll have the silver bullets real soon, and these guys will get replaced, presumably, by tons of, uh, uh, by tons of other units. Right, let's go two for now. And oh, we only have spears until we have access to the uh, shielded spears by the barracks. Let's go one Outrider. The Outriders can also tower over these units, so oh, that's fine. Right, this works for me. Let's skip, skip, skip. Let's hope that these guys sally out and give us another a lovely battle. And is this their last territory? I think it is. Which means it'll be a little bit while before we fight the vampire counts again, but what can you do? Alright, you guys are gonna sally, right? I guess they are. A Pyrrhic victory, casualties high potentially, and there's certainly potential with the enemy having ghouls, black knights, and fell bats, as well as a unit of grave guards. Certainly our artillery and our guns will be divided for uh, re as to who to focus down. I don't know what happened where I was like, ah. <laughs> go. Ah, wrong way. These helpless fools will soon cower in fear. For who could stand against the oncoming tide of death itself? All right, the oncoming tide of de who could stand against the oncoming tide of death itself? You be careful there, Elspeth. You be careful. That definitely sounds like something the Gash might say, or the Vampire Counts uh, might say. And you draw close to becoming uh, that which you so despise. Uh, two sides of the same coin as you guys are. But anyway, uh, here we go. Once again, we've got our Imperial formation. And and we've got four of our free company militia available to us, and the enemy has increased their troop count and their elites as well. Uh, two bats, two crypt horrors, there's or two crypt ghouls rather, uh, black knights there as well, and there's a graveguard unit to contend with, uh, with all their heavy armor and their sword and board, so they're silver shielded as well. And gonna be a toughie to bring down, and hopefully our artillery can uh, uh, can damage them heavily before they reach our lines. We do have a pretty good position available to us. Us, and with the elevation offered by this kill, we should be able to have all of the handgunners and the free companies firing. Did I mention I love free company militia? 
<laughs> oh, because I do. Anyway, uh, here we go. The enemy is on the approach, but fortunately the vampire counts are slow, generally speaking. Uh, in terms of their infantry, though the Black Knight's not so slow. I'm moving in to flank us, but we have deployed a unit of free company militia, a unit of spears, and even turned our gnome ironside to focus those Black Knights down. They're looking pretty fantastic over on the side here. Uh, the balefire glow of the eyes of the uh, mounts and uh, the graveguard are riding. But they're stuck fighting a unit of spears with their anti-large all the while guns hit them in the flanks. So and they're probably not going to have the best of days. And the enemy army is moving in. The enemy lord taking spirit leech and uh, more shots from the null iron sides and what have you. While some bats uh, flit overhead to get hit by additional bullets as well. Go figure, bullets are going to be a bit of a theme for this particular campaign. Anyway, looks like they will fly over our entire army. We don't yet have the uh, weight of fire necessary to uh, bring them down as they come in, but, uh, well, it'll get better over time. Interestingly, the bats decided to drop in on the spears to help the Black Knights. Perhaps the AI decided that this was an elite unit that they needed to bail out. They pop Van Hell's Dance Macabre on them in addition to using the fell bats to, for help, but with the free company militia firing into their backs and the null iron sides uh, providing support i don't think the bats are going to be there for all that long there we go on cue they drop and only the black knights remain and even they probably not for too much longer and ooh, elspeth has enough mass or enough knockback effect to uh, knock the enemy lord down that's interesting wasn't expecting that from her on foot, but she will be dueling with yet another enemy vampire lord. It's probably not something we want to do directly, as his stats are very much uh, greater than Elspeth's, and she's not going to uh, easily be able to stand against the enemy lord on foot. But yeah, look at that. And the knockbacks. Very nice. I can't wait to see how that uh, uh, how that works out for her uh, when she has her uh, dragon as well. All the while the enemy approaching. Ooh, I kind of like this color scheme actually. It's uh, well, it's obviously a lot more visible on the grave guard than it was on the uh, uh, skeleton warriors and spears. Looks pretty nice. Hey, it's nice and visible and, I don't know, it's kind of like, uh, uh, maybe rotten or almost, almost a color scheme that I would expect to see from the, uh, uh, from the Vampire Coast, rather than the Counts. Anyway, Elspeth and the Vampire Lord continue to fight, though Elspeth is now heavily damaged and we're gonna back her off, while we drop a parting Spirit Leech upon the enemy Lord, who probably does not have enough HP to survive it. The uh, Swordsman will cover uh, the Lord's Retreat. And while the enemy begins to crumble away, and at last, drops. And at last, drops. There we go. All right. And just as the enemy lord drops, his forces are moving on in in numbers. The bounce of power only about 70% in our favor so far, and several of our units are getting a little bit overrun. Fortunately, with the gaps in our lines, our null iron sides and handgunners are able to fire through. And when our swords and spears lend their lines collapse, we can simply move in the free companies to uh, plug uh, the gaps in our lines and act as melee. All right, perhaps I should have done a list, at least a little bit more focusing down of the enemy graveyard as they are in the settlement, or in the settlement. Uh, they have uh, reached our lines, rather, and it looks like the darn hellstorms will hit one of our units in the back. Should have put the handgunners a little bit lower, I guess, but then they would have been closer to the uh, enemy skeletons and whites down here. Anyway, it looks like the Free Company Militia are serving their purpose and now holding the line against the Graveguard and the skeletons, while our rightmost flank has not yet collapsed. So good job to these guys for holding, and I suppose since the enemy deployed mostly zombies to this side, it makes sense oh, while the enemy hasn't gone. Uh, spears and ghouls out here. Oh, actually, they're both ghouls. All right. Enemies send two units of ghouls here. This one, however, got surrounded by two units of Free Company militia firing uh, into their faces and into their flanks as well. And the first unit of ghouls will die quickly and allow us to reinforce the uh, unit of spears or swords, rather, on this side with more Free Company who will gun down the bats and the ghouls alike. 
Alright, just get yourselves into position and get those volleys started. Come on. Volley, please. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes, despite the fact that the unit should, in theory, have range, it doesn't like to fire and needs to be ordered to do so. But no big deal. Anyway, it looks like with the ghouls having fallen, most of the enemy have begun to crumble away the zombies. Surprisingly, not the Graveguard. We'll be the last on the field, and though it took a little bit of effort this time, giving us a close victory, we managed to pull it off, and Fyldorf is ours. Alright, there we go, a heck of a fight, and I'm already having a blast. And with this one, and ooh, we got 198 schematics as our reward for that one, and we're up to 395. And solid, solid indeed. Uh, the enemy is pretty much uh, done. Let's see the damage 40k, <laughs> appropriate, on our Hellstorm rocket battery. Uh, a little bit of damage on Elspeth and the Engineer, but until she gets her Carmen Dragon, uh, she's probably not going to be. Uh, trying to face off against too many lords as it is a teensy bit dangerous. 130 kills and 11k damage on these swords. The uh, Free Company Militia did well as the back line, but we're our second line, so they could have reinforced in, me in melee as needed. And it looks like the Ironsides and the Handgunners did decently as well. Lovely. Uh, we are going to occupy the place for ourselves, of course. And with that ending the turn, we got to heal as we went there. And fortunately, it looks like Fyldorf starts at tier 1, but that's just fine. We'll have to wait until that Fyldorf line market. Uh, I guess we could either wait 5 turns or build the growth temporarily, and I'm inclined to say growth may be the more important thing here. I wanted to build the barracks to get more uh, spears, but we could at the same time keep using free company of militia for this particular purpose. So, let's go for fields. All right, leadership and fighting vampire counts swell. Vicious gob spit. Hello, savage orcs and savage orc boar boys. Huh? Hmm. You certainly are close by, ain't you? Uh, we should probably put these units into Elspeth's army. At the same time, this will give this guy the opportunity to recruit. And how far can he run? I wonder. Ah, Fort Saul is held by Black Venom orcs. That's real interesting. Uh, Steiner, okay, the court of the night has been destroyed. There's those grain silos. Got to appreciate the additional growth and casualty or punishment rate. And maintain a total of three units of handgunners. Uh, done deal. Uh, schematics plus 250. Nice. Very nice indeed. Your handgunner program has given the gunnery school a batch of new cadets eager to learn in the field. Let us hope their enthusiasm lasts. Also, when do we get our pale scythe? Uh, rank 12, and at rank 15 we get Death's Timekeeper as well. Mm, we'll take a look at both of these as soon as we actually, uh, well, get to them. Now, next tech, I believe I said had to be either the construction of the campaign movement or the control, and I'm inclined to say construction first and other Your stuff second. Next up... We could recruit here. Oh, we still don't have that uh, Garden of More thing available. I'm very tempted to attack these guys here. I wonder if they have another army somewhere. That the power looks kind of suspicious, doesn't it? Mm hmm. This is the balance of power they get from this single horde. Well, we can't leave them here. And since we can't leave them here, I guess we're going to uh, well go after them. All right, you go here. Uh. Might. Looks like it's faster to travel this way. I think they'll run, or at least I imagine they'll run, but I guess we're about to find out. I declare war on them in a second. Delspeth, do you need to save your points, or are you okay? You know what, if we go through Inspiring Presence, yes, we could skip getting uh, this stuff immediately, but we could upgrade Pistol Core and buff up basically our entire army in this manner. So I think, yeah, let's go for Inspiring Presence and into Pistol Core. And frankly, our melee troops are having a tendency to rout a little bit. So, yeah, increase mobility for you, but then keep saving for Master of Ballistics. Uh, we have no items and no free ancillaries, which means we're good to go to fight some more. All right. Are you allied with anybody? Didn't think so. Too bad they're not at war with anybody, because otherwise we could have declared war and uh, done a little bit more work. And declare war, please. Send these 
And he's not gonna run. Lovely. Uh, you know what? We haven't fought orcs yet, and I think it's, despite being a minor battle, still worthy of a fight. Plus, these are savage orcs, and if they get into melee combat with our basic troops, and they're going to be, uh, they're going to still be potentially devastating. So, yeah. Fools will soon cower in fear. For who could stand against the oncoming tide of death itself? Alrighty, I uh, I like her cape. Uh, anyway, here we go. We've got the savage orcs against us this time. I mean, we had to have a battle against something a little bit different uh, from the vampire counts in the first episode as well. So hopefully this will round out uh, the episode with this fourth cinematic battle. Of course, the battles haven't been too big, but it's the start of the campaign. And well, you can't expect them all uh, to be huge fights. I suppose if you're... Uh, if if you're hankering for some bigger fights right now, the Archaeon campaign is still ongoing on the second channel. Uh, just to do a uh, shameless plug, which is currently in the end stages of the campaign and thus is pretty much all big battles, as we're being choosy about them at the time. Soon though, this will camp this campaign will reach a point where these minor battles will get auto-resolved and we'll hopefully only choose the big or good looking fights, but in the meantime, we contend with this one. Savage Orcs are making their way towards us. Fortunately for us, they only have the one unit of Savage Orc Error Boys, as uh, arcing units of enemy uh, range are going to be fairly threatening to uh, gun lines with handguns and such, as uh, they can get melted away by crossbows or archers very, very quickly if the enemy is allowed to fire upon them. Fortunately, since the enemy, though, has one, it shouldn't be all that bad, and and the big threats here are going to be the Savage Orc Boar Boys. One is being focused down by our cannon and has lost about half of its HP. The other one, however, is fine and will get a charge into our swords. Unfortunately, I decided to keep our anti-large spears on our flanks and thinking that the enemy boars would attempt to flank us instead of charging directly forward. But it looks like this time around they decided not to do that. And that's all right, though, because the Nuln Ironsides are positioned directly behind this unit of uh uh, of uh, swordsmen, and uh, though it costs us the elevation, this allows us to easily fire at the enemy over the head of our own units, or heads, I should say. Uh, the enemy lord is here, and we're going to pop a spirit leech on him, but unlike with fighting the vampire lords, we're not going to pop Elspeth into a duel with him, as we can allow the uh, cannons and the guns to gun him down, together with the spell work. And then keep Elspeth at a reasonably in a reasonably good shape, such that uh, she is able to continue on with the rest of her army and the oncoming battles. Uh, we've got our reinforcements arriving on the field now, and they're going to take position to start adding fire support as well. One of our units of Free Company Militia has looped around at the enemy Savage Orcs and will be firing into their flanks as well, which will probably drop this unit right quick. Savage Orcs having a pretty bad day. We have no magical damage, but that fire resistance is not... Or fire resistance, physical resistance, is just looking to not be enough against the uh, sheer weight of fire that we are now starting to get. This poor unit of swords is going to have to hold back a lot of enemy Savage Orcs, however, here. And led by the war boss at that, who belly flops right into their formation. Um, but the rest of his army, perhaps unbeknownst to him, as he's too crazed by bloodlust is quickly falling. The bounce of power shifts to about 85%, maybe even 90 in our favor, and this blob will probably be the last on the field very shortly, especially now that we get support from the additional units of uh, handgunners that are helping us out. And the cannons are actually, uh, were able to get a few decent shots into the enemy lord while he was in, in the center of the enemy formation. All right, the Savage Orcs continue to die in droves. It looks like we also deployed fairly well here as this little impassable terrain bit, this little plateau slash cliffside, kept the enemy forcibly blobbed up on the leftmost flank. They only sent one unit here, another unit of Savage Orcs, but another unit of Free Company Militia flanked them and then started shooting them in the back and routing them 
for pretty darn quickly. All right, it looks like the enemy lord is routing, and with that, the rest of his army will shatter and run as well. There we go. Fight for your right to live, gun for your right to live here. And it's certainly working out. Now, beautiful job, and I'm um, loving the fact that we're getting more and more units on the field now just to get uh, uh, just to get a little bit of fun with the formations. Anyway, we're going to chase the enemy down. I also forgot to take a look at the Outriders, but we'll take a look at them next battle, and we'll build a couple more. Uh, anyway, maybe another regular Outrider, and then two of the uh, uh, Grenade Launchers, or the Bordermen. Uh, regiment of Renown, or not Regiment of Renown, but uh, uh, State Troop as well. I think that other than the Boar Boys, we should be able to kill off everything here, but rather than waste the time, we'll do it off screen. All right, beautiful. Slain down pretty much to an orc, with the exception of the Savage Orc Boar Boys, but uh, there's not much. We do keep uh, using our uh, melee infantry in the sense that, uh, well, we're starting to run out and we'll need to replace them. On the other hand, as soon as we get our insides and uh, uh, other gunnery units, will there really be a need? Now... It's an okay amount of money, but I think we're going to heal up this time around. I don't know whether we are in range of the fort, and indeed we are. Oh, we also have to knock you out, sir. Oh, but Bernhardt won't be able to reach the fort, sadly. And hello, we got a warrior bane. Well, that's nice. But I think we'll give it to the engineer for now. And else, or maybe else, ah, it doesn't really matter. That was a finally the Barded War Horror has been waiting on that. Uh, Engineer, you're at rank six, Elspeth, you're at rank seven, but you need rank 12. But for now, we're going straight into pistol core. Though, on the other hand, eight percent missile strength isn't really all that much. Hmm. Let me just see here. Uh, she's got reduction of upkeep for gunnery units, and we can use uh, steam tanks and land ships, essentially, as our line holders, our anchors, together with our units of uh, known iron sides. And we also have regen for uh, the... Hmm, for the lord herself. It's just upkeep reduction, right? Yeah, so we don't have to be too concerned with what we do here. All right, well, that's just swell. Uh, we still need to destroy you. For Sigma and, and the, okay, don't 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 hurt our army too much. <laughs> All right, zero losses, zero losses. Uh, we're good. And use that to heal a little bit. Can you still hit the fort here? Vicious gobs been destroyed, and yes, indeed, we can. There's basically nothing there. Although the problem lies in this guy potentially attacking Fyldorf immediately after. Now, Fyldorf is walled. I don't know whether this guy can actually reach Fyldorf. Now, it looks like he would be able to. Hmm. And it's potentially concerning. We could wait the turn. Is this thing being upgraded? It isn't. So if we were to wait the turn, we could still do this. All right, all right. Uh, Frostfire gem enables flaming attacks, assigned Lord or Hero, and Frostfire attacks as well. Uh, you currently just have magical attacks, so why not? Assign Lord or Hero. Or we could give it to the Engineer. Hmm. And the speed reduction would essentially act as a suppression uh, effect as well. And that could potentially be quite nice. Anyway, we'll deal with you in a second. I'm wondering about two things. We're, uh, we're still not on turn five, but it's been an eventful couple turns, uh, let's say. Uh, I think we're going to switch out of State Troop Levy for Council Burgomeister so we can reduce our costs for upgrading the, uh, uh, the towns here. I'm tempted to get another Lord at File dwarf. Poison attacks. Not so bad. Uh, the other lord will be costly, but we will need to potentially defend it. Again, if we attack this turn, or we wait until next turn to do it. And you know what? Let's wait until next turn. It's just safer, and then this way we'll actually get access to our uh, gardens of more. You can also channel to get a little bit of extra magics. And wait, if you move over here, if you move over. If you move over to here, and we can use you to transfer troops. Oh, lovely. Alrighty, and you, sir, I guess are going to want to get hold the line in case you reinforce. We could actually probably use you to take Fort Saul. 
and allow Elspeth to continue moving back to dealing with Graz. Like, these guys have just the two territories, so we should be able to take them pretty quick. And we need to take Steingart anyway, and Fort Sol, so that we block off anybody coming in from here. Though I suppose the Skaven would bypass all of this anyway. Uh, diplomacy check. Real quick, Reichland wants to trade. Well, we want to trade too. Let's get that military access. Uh, the uh, Gardens of more Slashly Black Towers, I believe, will allow us to bypass Imperial uh, uh, Imperial military access. So they'll serve that purpose as well, not merely allowing us to teleport. And how's that control? Ooh, we might get a rebellion if we're not careful. Collected income, difficulty level, and provincial instability. Well, the provincial instability will die down. Uh, can we build anything here? And just spears, huh? I mean, they're cheap. Just fill out our army with spears and then delete them later. Yeah, let's do that. I think it's better than the 15 mana that we would otherwise gain. Can always throw them into the orcs as needed. Anyway, let's skip the rest of this. Building upgrades and stuff and turn. Proceed to taking Fort Sol and then to knocking out these, uh, uh, this little orky menace around here. Alright, let's unlock those gardens. Come on now. There we go. Gardens more unlocked. When the Cult of Moor establishes new gardens, Elspeth is given the opportunity to establish new towers in return for her aid in times of need. The gardens of Moor are bastions of solitude in this dark world, where my arcane research and rapid transposition are made manifest. As part of her arcane learning, Elspeth spends time roaming between her black towers, situated within the Gardens of Moor. Her magical storehouse travels with her, imbued with the ancient magic of Fosric, to transport her forces and coveted artifacts. So, friendly or neutral empire-owned settlements known to Elspeth can be selected to construct up to five Gardens of Moor. Once constructed, she and her army can travel instantly to a selected garden via the fast travel button. The Gardens of Moor also offer powerful buildings viewed in the prov province overview panel via the button to the right of the building icons and select any existing gardens for the option to deconstruct and make space so we can set them up and tear them down as needed they cost 3,000 gold to build and we could very well build one uh, we could build one directly at Nuln so that we can always teleport right back to it for example which is certainly a decent option in the sense that we'll be having our biggest uh, uh, sort of it'll be the territory that churns out the most troops. On the other hand, we'll want to build one somewhere around here, maybe a needling or something, so that we can approach Sylvania without trespassing, especially if we can't end up getting the uh, a military access with Averheim. Have at least 80 Imperial Authority will give us 3,000 gold, and Magistrix Protects gives us diplomatic relations with Empire bonus. You know what, I think we're going to build one at Nuln. I'm not sure it's the best move, but I want to find out two things. A, what the buildings do exactly, and B, whether building one costs more than building another. Ooh, as the dragon flies. Mission successful. Gardens of more fast travel cost 50%. Oh. Well, if I had known that that was a thing, I probably would have built it a lot further away from where we are. But we still need to conquer this stuff. I guess we could go southward into the Southern Realms and knock out the Disciples of the Moth through Fort Saul after a while. Hmm. Maybe also grab Gristle Valley before Durthu does. And maybe trade it to him for an alliance and to stay permanently friendly. And we'd be losing out on the tusks, but it's certainly a decent option, I would say. But anyway, Almighty Moor demands respect wherever his cultists reside. A garden temple of tombs ought to be worthy act of worship with a tower at its heart steeped in the magic of death. Alright, so we got free money out of that, so we only spent a little bit. Gardens of Moor constructed at Nuln. And use the Gardens of Moor to travel will give us 3,000 gold back. So, once we build some stuff here to recruit, I guess we'll do one there. Also, while we're here, uh, build up the village first at... I know, one of them. We'll need both pretty much immediately, so it won't matter. Alright. The Black Tower rises from the earth like a beacon, a looming symbol of arcane power. More bids you travel between these beacons of Shyish. No better study the dark, to better study the dark secrets of death magic within his welcoming embrace. Alrighty. Well, now that the first one has been established, and okay, we gotta wait five turns to construct a new one, I'd be curious to know whether they cost the same amount of money or whether it exponentially increases. I guess we'll find out. 
for now, though, before we end the episode, let's just take a look at what this does. We get a tower that provides additional uh, halberdier garrison. Uh, allows Aspeth to travel to this location immune to diplomatic penalties, which is what I was talking about, and replenishment in foreign ter territory. All armies in local and adjacent territories, which is quite interesting. Ah, d damn you, Zinchant cultist. All right, so we have the Amethyst College here with faction-wide buffs for winds of magic power reserve and capacity for amber wizards, or amber wizards, uh, battle wizards, amethyst wizards. And we've got the Temple of Moor unlocking Knights of Moor, Electric Count state troops, and figure loss reduction for fighting undead for all our faction. And, ooh, look at that. Big old garrison and recruitment immediately available, including the Knights of the Black Rose. So we could have some heavy cav available to us fairly quickly, I might add. You know what? This might be worth building very, very soon. In fact, we could do this just to build just to build a couple of Knights of the Black Rose in uh, the army who won't route nearly as fast as everybody else. Plus, this will give us immediate access to mortars without having to build the mortar. But yeah, okay, I like that idea. I assume we can also tear these down. Can't quite tell, but if we can tear down the entire garden, we can definitely tear down the building. Anyway, that's decided, but for now, I think, folks, we're out of time, and I'm going to have to call the episode here next time we take Fort Saul, Gristle Valley, and Steingard, fighting some more orcs, and then decide whether to proceed down first into the uh, territories of the Disciples of the Maw and take the furry real estate therein, or we proceed immediately to start fighting Sylvania, which would be quite nice as well, especially as Castle Drakenhof is a big old uh, castle cow of a territory about decent options i think and you guys uh, let me know what you think but for now calling it here more elspeth to come so stay tuned don't forget to leave those likes and comments below all glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching